Welcome to the Hoosier Dome, 37,444. And they are watching the Fighting Illini, the top seed of the Midwest, explode. They are 5-5 five of five against the would-be Cinderella Ball State, and it is 10-4, 17 minutes. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brad Musburger, along with Billy Packer. Billy, uh, Ball State's coach Rick Majer has quickly called a timeout because of these impressive rungs that Illinois can get on you. Well, Rick has got to keep tempo down somewhat, and he's got a two-edged sword that he's fighting right here. He has to go beat the press, and then sometimes you have to attack the press, but he's a club that likes to play a tempo ball game. So far, it's all Illinois way because they're forcing the ball down the court, going to that great low post offense they have, and their press has been very effective. Very difficult for a team like Ball State with only one day to turn it around and have to play in Illinois. When they can sit there for a week and get ready for a Pittsburgh, it's a little bit different, but now the pressure is squarely on Rick Majerus, former coach at Marquette and an assistant coach in the NBA at the Milwaukee Bucks under Don Nelson. Lou Henson, who has taken New Mexico State to a Final Four in 1970, he has done a fabulous job at Illinois, yet he has not been successful in taking the Illini to the Final Four. Feeling some pressure. He got past McNeese State. What an impressive start so far by the Big Ten in this tournament. Illinois, because of the top seed, they wear the home whites. Dark road for Ball State. They're located about an hour from here, an hour north in Muncie, Indiana. So sit back and see if the Cardinals of Ball State can climb back in. Tonight. Key matchup here today, down in the low post. McCurdy and Kim. Another steal, this time by Gill, a great defender. Wanted battle, and that time it was forced right back by Ball State on the run. Here's Kidd. Billy, give us the Arkansas Little Rock story with regard to Ball State. Well, you have Kidd and McCurdy, who both played at Arkansas Little Rock in that one of the great regional battles when they went double overtime with NC State. So it's not like these players haven't faced this type of competition in a dome situation, which really helps Rick. He now goes to his own defense. One, two, two. Parrish awful small in that back line and not physical to go up with Anderson, Lowell, Hamilton, or Battle. There he is right there. And he drew the foul on the inside on Parrish. Well, they went right to a weakness because Rick Majerus doesn't have the third powerful player to play inside against that threesome. Rick, coach of the year in the MAC this year. The Mid-American Conference has not won a game in the NCAA since 83 until Ball oh, State upended Pittsburgh. Folks, 12 long shots, one outright. It is the most exciting first round that I have ever seen in the 80s. Could you believe what Princeton did to Georgetown last night? Pushed him to the wall, Bill. It was an incredible game, of course. You talk about a guy being prepared. Pete Carell's type of offense is prepared from October 15th to play at Georgetown, so he didn't have to make a lot of adjustments. And that was uh, one of the great games in the history of the, of the NCAA tournament, in my opinion. Now, keep a close eye on Illinois if you're not familiar with them. This is a team that could get to Seattle. The road is tough and rocky, but this team has a lot of talent. Somewhat interchangeable, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, 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 They can all run the floor extremely well. It's a smart team, well coached. Force another turnover. Here's Gill. He's the key. He sets the table. There's the pass. Beautiful. Oh, my. Here we go. Over the head dunk, another turnover. Gill doesn't touch a piece of that one. Referees are not sure. It should be Illinois' ball. Just beautiful teamwork here. Kendall Gill, the club was 4-4 four and four when he was out of the lineup. Lowell Hamilton with his great leaping ability, and the fans are cheering because they've got the big screen here to watch in the dome. Now, what Henson did immediately at Illinois was he closed the recruiting door. He keeps the Chicago kids down in Champaign. That city turns out some of the greatest talent in the country. Gill missing from the three now. And it is Illinois coming up with a Kenny battle, showing you what he does best at the offensive glass. They squeeze the trigger. The foul is called. Put the basket up. Field goal counts. That's nine points for Hamilton. Again, we talk about that third man, and Hamilton is the guy that's really having the advantage now. Battle doing what he does so well, knocking the ball loose and then picking it up on the loose ball situation. Hamilton comes across, gets it up, makes the basket, but is a foul. Billy, why is it going to be so tough now for Ball State to come from behind? Well, their problem is trying to keep this game down into a half-court situation, and so far Illinois has taken that away from them completely. 
They haven't even been able to run their offense yet, but one time down the floor. It's 15-6, Illinois. Here's what they want to do, get a chance half court to run the offense. And that's the first time in maybe four or five possessions they've had a chance. This Illinois team has beaten five. The foul goes against Ball State again. This Illinois team has won five straight games versus NCAA tournament teams. That's right. They beat McNeese State, but to close out the year in the Big Ten now, before they drew Majerus here today, they beat Minnesota by five, Indiana by three, Iowa by 24, and Michigan by 16. You are looking at a team that is peaking at just the right time. Miller in the ball game now in the back line gives him a little bit more size. It allows McCurdy to play up on the point, and he can go right down in the middle there and help out a little bit on the rebounding. Here's Anderson from the corner. It's a two-point shot. Anderson. We talked about Lowell Hamilton moving Anderson. out with his jumper. Everybody saw the range that Nick Anderson has on his with that great shot that beat Indiana at the buzzer. Illinois, 8 of 9 starting this game. Ball State, 4 of 6, not getting their shots off. You can see how difficult it is against the Henson trademark. Now they work it easy and get a layup. Keith Stallings into the ball game. Maybe a little bit difficult for Illinois to match up now. Be Stallings in the ball game a little bit more powerful. Stallings, the Chicago youngster, he has played against several of these Illinois players during his high school days. We have McCurdy not taking anything with Lowell Hamilton down inside. He thought he had inside position. Nice piece of officiating. There is Keith, the way. sophomore. Oklahoma struggling, aren't they? Could you believe not only do 12 underdogs win outright, but two number one seeds survive by a single point. I mean, Oklahoma barely got by. Georgetown's dramatic 50-49 win over Princeton, and now Illinois will show us some of their depth filling. He's going. Bardo and Lowell Hamilton going to take a seat. Small into the ball game now with Smith. But one thing to remember about Ball State, they are a very well-coached team. Right down the middle, Smith comes, and it's an offensive foul. Another yep. turnover, and Ball State slowly is starting to climb back in this. That one actually hurt Ball State in regard to the foul because they were off and running on the other end of the court. Illinois foul number 23, Larry Smith. His first foul, he fouled number three. Stallings would have had a layup without any trouble. And they match up man-to-man -man in this press, and Illinois can go a number of ways with their press, but when they match up man-to-man, -man, the thing that's so good, even when you screen them, they end up with a guy of the right size on whoever you get the ball to. Going to the trap, trying to bust an open man. It's two-on-one ball state advantage. Short on a jump shot, only get one off. They could have forced the glass a little bit that time, but Stalling elected not to. I thought Stalling should have gone to McCurdy on the pass. We've got a situation where he could have overpowered on the inside. Quick pass by Battle, and it's Anderson. He has been perfect from that spot today. Anderson. Eight total points for Anderson, who broke Indiana's heart in a classic in Bloomington. Good, solid screen down on the baseline to set that up. Battle knowing exactly where to go with the ball. Now let's see what Majerus can come up with here in his half-court game. Miller didn't get it to fall that time, but they get it back. A fresh try, running, hook shot will go. Miller doing a great job. He's one of the top shooters on the ball club. 13 points, 5 rebounds in 21 minutes against Pitt. Was really the guy that turned that game around. On the glass early as Butts returns. Illinois with 5 rebounds and Ball State with 2. Nichols sits down for Coach Majerus. If you're Rick Majerus right now, you've withstood that early rush. You bet. And, uh, and they've gone to the zone. They're trying to turn the game, as I said, in a little bit more half-court confrontation. Billy, I don't think we've been around anybody who really understands the game any more than Rick Majerus. He learned under Al McGuire. And Anderson comes up, and he's the man they can't stop. That's 10 points now. He's working down the left baseline, and he is killing Ball State right now. 
Great man-to-man, -man, tough, but there's a good situation. And on the three, right back to Miller. He's going to look shot again. Can't get it, and Smith rebounds for the Illini. You know, another thing about this Illinois club, everybody's a rebounder. Here they come. Oh, oh Battle had it. You and know what his put, problem? Put it down. His problem, Brent, was he was up too high. That may sound crazy, but he misjudged how high above the rim that he was. And it'll hit off the back rim. You can see right here, Kenny Battle misjudges his height. They'll throw it off the back of the rim. <laughs> he, he really didn't have a good grip on the ball, did he? As he started to bring it down, you could see it starting to lose the handle. There. One, of the, one of the most powerful leapers in all of college basketball. Another steal. They're forcing a turnover. There's full court pressure too much. They missed that quality point, man. There's a foul underneath. Again, another charge. Smith's got to be careful. 91% from the field goal percentage for, for Illinois. Now, of course, a lot of those have been on the break, but some nice shots by Anderson on the bench line. And when you talk about that, Ball State is fourth in the nation in defensive field goal percentage. So it's not like they're doing it against chopped liver here. Bardo returning for Illinois. Majerus trying to get a little bit of a revolving door with his backcourt because he realizes how much pressure they're in. He doesn't want to physically wear them out early. The great court quickness by Illinois. Even if they don't steal it, notice how many times they get a hand on the ball as you try to bring it up on them. You see they they go to the trap now, and they can run so fast they can cover up on the other side. They never leave a man open long. Here they come again. It's Anderson in the middle. Bounce pass to Gill. I think Rick Majerus is going to have to keep that ball out of the corner on the initial pass, Brent, and try to go more up the middle. Every time they go to the corner, it'll let it allows Kenny Battle to go over with the double team, and he's just too active for him. So it gets tough early here. In the second round, they force still another turnover. That is six by the Cardinals. Illinois leading 23-12. We've got Mueller in the game at seven foot, but he's not going to be a match for the quickness and power of this Illinois bunch inside. They'll go on Anderson and drive him to the floor. That's the big man that Billy just told you about. And he's 7-1 out of Wisconsin, Dells, Wisconsin. And Majerus now in deep trouble against the fighting Illini here early. The Big Ten has served notice in this tournament. And it would not take too much imagination to get all five of their teams on into the regional semifinals next week. Mueller, of course, went to Marquette. Rich recruited him up there, held him out for a year, hoping he'd get a little stronger. Now, of course, he's moved with him down to Ball State. Still not the most powerful fella, and today, with the type of active, strong athletes that Illinois has, he could have a real problem in this game. Anderson at the line. He's the leading scorer on this game. Average is better than 17 points a game. He pulls down almost eight rebounds a game. Blocks a shot a game. All Big Ten pulled off the line a little bit there. His weakness. 23-12, Billy, with 11 minutes to go, first half. Miller will look shot. Pushing foul, goes against Illinois. Um, Miller's going to push off again by Miller? Yes, it was. That's going to go against Ball State. Lou, it's going your way. Don't get upset. It's against Rick. Now, Miller's not shy, obviously. Now Marcus Liberty into the game, and Lou Henson merely able to reload. I mean, he's just bringing in one outstanding player after another. Well, here's a point we can make. All the code here is handling the ball now, Marcus Liberty. Because of academics, he could not play his freshman year. It set him back because he couldn't practice, not because he couldn't play. And so many coaches you talk to say, let this young man who can't play at least practice, at least work out. How about your feelings on that subject? Well, I think that's the universal uh, acceptance on the part of all coaches, and I think fans as well. The kids uh, get an opportunity at least to be in the environment that they've been around all their life and get an opportunity to, for the coaches to give them some type of direction. Field nice off defense the by the 30. It's the 2-3 zone again. Mueller in the middle. I think they can go to Lowell Hamilton down there. Just firing from the baseline. They should have taken your advice that time, Professor. Ball State has turned it over three times nice in the last three possessions. McCurdy losing the handle. Put back and miss again. Liberty off with the rebound, and here's Gill. And he is fouled by Nichols. 
You know, Brent, it really is interesting. Uh, Kendall Gill, you talk about chemistry on basketball teams and with Illinois' depth, but they really couldn't replace Gill when he went out of there like they could probably replace, at least in the short term, anybody else on their club. He's the got numbers. the outside shot. He's also the good ball handler on the break. Well, they did 20-0 with Gill in the lap. They were 8-4 without him. They didn't lose until he went out with that foot injury. Here he is. Checks one in on cue. A three-pointer for Kendall Gill. Again, see when they go in the corner, it allows Kenny Battle to double team. They've got to get that ball out of the corner. Illinois ball. I haven't seen many players in college basketball that are quick enough to play that ball out of bounds and then get over there to double in the corner. Officials time out. They're going to make them take that ball back out of bounds again. They are not going to allow it. Rick going to the top. That's the John Thompson interpretation by Rick of the use of the foul. And they're going to give it to Illinois. Let's see what they set up down they, here. They, they, they gave it to, I know what they did. They gave it the to Ball team. State, right. the wrong team when they came out of that timeout. Majera said, Look, did we have the ball? And now they're getting it straightened away. I don't know if they are you or not. Were, you were, Coach, you were working on a chalkboard, and it was a great play down here to McCurdy. The most surprised man in the arena was Lou Henson. Well, you remember? When Dana Kirk at Memphis State used to go the, you know, have everybody set up in the wrong end, that wasn't exactly the play, but the same reaction. Loose ball, Illinois comes up with it. Hamilton, and it'll be McCurdy rebounding. Cardinals back on the attack. It's time for Ball State to try to get the two big guys on the block, Kidd and McCurdy. No, that's not going to work. They got to, they got to bring the ball out, get the ball down in the low post until they can hit it in there nice and easily. Ball Takes State some time. has missed its last five. They don't even get it off again. Illinois wanted liberty and good hustle that time by Ball State as Parrish jumps back in and knocks it out of bounds. Parrish, a solid player for Rick Majerus, uh, moving up a notch today to a different level of athleticism than he would normally have to play against. Did not have a four-year scholarship offer out of high school. It's a turnover. Kid. It's 26 to 12. Hamilton's on Kid. Let's see if they can get him the ball. Bingo from the corner. Billy Butts. Billy Butts. Who had a little bit annoyed because Vic Anderson didn't follow Butts to the corner. Back to the man-to-man -man goes Rick Majerus. They get it into Anderson, operating quickly with the turnaround jump shot from either baseline. He is so strong in the upper body. They go to the trap in the corner. Ball loose and rolling out of bounds again. Illinois' ball. Brent, the ball will not work in the corners. Rick Majerus has to go for another timeout. They've got to go up the middle some. And you can see that Oklahoma also has taken an eight-point lead in their game. Here it is, Illinois by 14-28. with 12 points. He's perfect from the field. Six out of six. Now it is Smith's turn to run the fighting Illini off of Henson's bench. This is Battle. He's the only starter who hasn't scored. And over the top comes Anderson. Well, Brent, one of the things you see in NCAA tournament play all the time and how teams do regular season and then what do they do against a higher level of opponent. You can see Ball State, as I mentioned, fourth in the nation in field goal percentage defense, but today Illinois up in the 70s. Ball is out of bounds, belongs to Ball State. 
Billy, how about the long baseball pass off of this full court press for Coach Major? Well, that is a possibility with two exceptions. They've had Kendall Gill, Hamilton, and Anderson playing safety. But now they've got two safety men. And what you have is a quicker athlete playing safety than you have a guy going out catching a pass. So it's, it's tough to go long, but they may be able to break up the middle. They've got to keep it out of the corners. Billy, have you seen five men in the college game who cover overall as well as the Illini? I'm sure Georgetown must rank with them, but what about this group? Well, this club covers better as a fivesome because they're all interchangeable in size. Georgetown, as we saw yesterday with Alonzo Mourning, or when they put Matambo in the game, at least you can pull them out. They're not used to playing guys on the perimeter. But any one of this fivesome can play on the perimeter defensively. There's Hamilton squeezing the trigger, got the roll. That was Billy Butts at the other end for Ball State. Hamilton. That's 11 for Hamilton. 12 for Anderson, 11 for Hamilton. They're leading the way. That's better execution there. But what's so difficult is to beat a press and then pull things back out to get into your offense. Just too quick. You know, it, it, not only is it the foot quickness of Illinois, their hands are quick. And strength. Nick Anderson sat out a year, as did Marcus Liberty, and obviously came back last year to make second team all Big Ten. This year, an all Big Ten performer and one of the top forwards in college basketball. Now, Ball State's averaging only 13 turnovers a game, and already against Illinois, they've turned it over 12 times. Anderson finally misses. And getting to the glass strongly was Curtis Kidd. And Battle slapped at it. Well, Norm Stewart made a great comment. He said, the kid's got the right name for the way he plays. Talking about Kenny Battle. And that was Kidd called for an offensive foul. And now he has a word or two for battle as he goes up the floor. A little frustration on the part of Ball State at this point. Been some cheap shots taken out here early in this ball game. And I think you're right, Brent. I think Ball State getting very frustrated. Ball State substitution number 31, Greg Miller. Miller will return for Majerus. You know, and Rick, we talked to him yesterday about adjustments. He was going to try to make subtle adjustments. He brought his team out to practice for defensive practice this morning. But it's so tough to make any adjustments because this game has been played 94 feet, which is what Lou Henson says be the difference between this club and the last club that he had make a major run to the Final Four. Well, it is so much tougher for an underdog in that second game. A little bit self-satisfied. The Illini and the hand were pushed by McNeese State. And Illinois and Champaign, they've read about Ball State and Muncie, Indiana. They knew this is a pretty good basketball team. Longest winning streak in the country on the line, 16. Won the Mid-American Conference. Got the best one-loss record in the land. The different class today. It won't fall, and there's a foul down on the inside against Hamilton. That is his second personal. And that was Roll Hamilton without any question pulling McCurdy back. A lot of John going on out there. Yeah, we've got McCurdy and Hamilton. Are, there's a lot of talk going on now amongst the athletes on both teams. You know, I think it'd be a good idea for the officials to pull these five kids on each side together at center and say, hey, let's just play this game. Just warn them that uh, they know it's a little bit too much John going on. Six minutes, first half. It is a 30 17 Illinois lead. Miller missing and foul underneath going to go against Illinois. That was Gill on that far side and he picks up his first personal much to the dismay of Henson. Well there's a case with Gill who is listed as a guard on this ball club going up against Miller at six foot eight who's obviously a forward but staying right with him on the boards. Well Billy with this speed that Illinois has they can send four crashing to the glass and they can retreat quickly on defense. That's how fast this team is. Well, and you don't get any bad floor balance situations because whoever is the back man, he's capable of going back there and defending. So it's a very unique team. And yet if you listen to Henson, he says, oh, we don't match up with the big teams. We don't have size down there. You know, if you look ahead for them, and I'm not uh, discounting Ball State's opportunity at least to come back in this game, but if you look ahead, the type of team that they could have the most problem with is somebody that does have the powerful center that's 6'10 in the buck because they might not be able to match up in that regard inside, particularly with all of their switching. Somewhere Alonzo Mourning is saying, I'll take Illinois rather than Princeton every day. <laughs> <laughs> he 
Liberty off the dribble on the left baseline. Has to give it up, but it's knocked away by Ball State. Run down by Anderson, and Ball State comes up with a turnover. Well, that's going to be Anderson's turnover, but what caused the problem was Marcus Liberty trying to go one-on-one -on -one when it's not necessary. See, there is this case. Now, Bardo is on McCurdy, but see, that's not a big mismatch. Now, now Bardo can switch right over and handle the guard. Butts gets in, and it won't fall. But it's McCurdy with an offensive rebound and a putback. And the Ball State kids obviously showing an awful lot of spirit here, Brent, because they could have just given up. But that's not going to be the case. Some tough, hard-nosed kids out here. Illinois usually has that one slumber session in a game, a walkabout, I think, tennis players call it. And they're in the middle of it right now. Ball State has battled back to within nine, and they have the ball inside of five minutes. Now, Parrish got hit in the head and kept his composure till he could get that pass off. Greensboro, East Region, another Minnesota team. They were a light favorite today. Sienna can play. Oklahoma getting it together now. All of these teams seated number one have that rough opening game jitter. Unless they can blow that team out in a hurry, which is usually oh, not the case. Oh, look at that pick that McCurdy <laughs> came out. He can set one on you, too. He came right after Gill that time. And Gill tried to throw a little bit of an elbow back at him. Well, he better, he better get off that game. Now Gill is leaning on McCurdy down on the inside. But steps in and misses the jump shot. Would have been a big moment for Ball State. Battle puts it on the floor. Bardo off the fake. Glides to the left side. Ball State Brent, rebounds. Brent, what's happening to Illinois right now is that they feel that they've got a big work in margin, and guys are starting to go too much one on one. They were a lot better off when they pounded the ball down inside to that low post to battle in Anderson and when Hamilton was in there. They've got to get back to that. Ball State team showing a little fight. You know that? Oh, Parrish got hit in the face. He got Rick Majerus going crazy. Parrish got hit right in the face. He throws the ball away, but watch, it's going to be a swipe right in the face. There it is. He got hit right in the hand, right in the face with Gill's hand. Hey, Billy, how did three officials miss that? I don't know. I don't know. Rick Majerus didn't miss it. He was uh, 110 feet away. Well, that hurt over here, didn't it? Accidental as it may have been, it was certainly still a personal foul. Now Ball State getting in a nice little half-court movement here. And Miller has it slapped away, and Liberty fouled him in the process. Brent, a nice job by Rick Majerus to keep his ball club in the game, try to get back to that half-court situation, and they're doing a good job with it. And defensively, Billy, they have not given Illinois a field goal in the last four minutes. Yeah, and I'll credit them somewhat defensively, but I've got to take a little bit away from Illinois in the fact that they've gotten away from their offense. They, you know, they got some easy baskets, and they haven't punched the ball down inside. Well, tonight on CBS, the World Figure Skating Championships, and we want to remind everybody about the time. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern, CBS Sports Special, the World Figure Skating Championships. Here we have 3.42 in the first half. It is 30-21, Illinois over Ball State. Miller at the free throw line, missed his first. 81% free throw shooter. Has a nice release. As you can see that big knee brace there. We'll have to have that... Uh, taken care of right after the season. They are three of five from the free throw line in the first half. Down to eight, and you can see the score up there now. 30-point situation, so getting a little closer to what Rick Majerus would like. Bounce pass to Anderson, and defensively, they stop him again. Boy, that was Parrish and Miller. That Parrish has got a lot of heart. He's up against superior athletes, but he is banging in there pretty good. Five unanswered points for Ball State. Nichols is not going to shoot. Illinois taking advantage of that. Away from the ball. Oh, no. Small thought it was his foul, but it's going to be Kidd getting a chance to go there. That's number one on Small. And Henson's team 
now facing the one and one situation. Well, Brent, there's a situation. Small a guard gets caught in the switch, having to go against Kidd. Kidd, much more powerful down on the inside, was able to take advantage. So sometimes the switches will get you in trouble. Ball State withheld that first blast by Illinois. Curtis Kidd. And he grew up in Detroit and not only was he a teammate of McCurdy at Arkansas Little Rock but they also played together at Cooley High School in Detroit. That Arkansas Little Rock team beat Notre Dame in 1986. Remember that? Both of these fellas played in that game. They've had tournament experience. Mrs. Miller got a piece of it. Let's see if Illinois starts punching back down inside the battle and Anderson on the blocks. That's what got them the lead early on. This is Battle, 33. Anderson was out there with him, and instead, they punch it inside to Smith. No foul was called. He was driven to the floor after hitting the field goal. 32-23. No place for the faint of heart out here today. I mean, yeah, both, that both teams have enough physical power to push each other pretty well down in low. Bucks unable to get off today, and they need his scoring. Get on the turnaround, travel. That's the 13th turnover by Ball State. We're at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. This is a future site of the Final Four. The crowd today, 37,444. They may open up the entire arena for the Final Four. That at least is Dick Schultz's preliminary thought, and he will give it to the committee and see what they think about it. Brent, I was, here, the two minute mark. I was here for a game where they opened it all up. The Olympic team against uh, the NBA All-Stars had 60-some thousand here that night, and it worked very nicely for basketball. Gill. There's the leader. Banging in an important jump shot, and it goes back now to 34-23. to 23. You notice how Rick Majerus has kept the ball against the press out of the corners in the last 10 minutes. And it's really been much more effective beating the press. Boy, there's a screen. Purdy coming out and set that screen on battle. battle. Yeah. You know, these aren't screens. These are, these are like alignment in the NFL. Well, you're not to lead a sweep. You're looking at guys that weigh 230. In the case of Kidd, about 240. Nick Majerus goes back to the zone. Got to be careful here with Kendall Gill and Nick Anderson on the perimeter. Illinois hit only three of its last nine shots as they cool down here in the first half. Gill's open on the side. They don't swing it to him. Short with the shot. And going back was Kidd for the rebound. He's gaining respect on those boards. Miller couldn't hit the wraparound. Small was there. Illinois' ball. Well, if you're Rick Majerus, you don't need Miller taking that shot. They've gotten back into this game by occupying the ball a little bit. Unless he knows he has the uncontested layup, probably in their best interest to bring it back out. This Ball State club has beaten three Big Ten teams this year all on the road. Purdue, Northwestern, and Minnesota. So it's not like they haven't had a little taste of Big Ten competition. Now, the one they beat on the road was Minnesota, but they went into Minnesota. Only non-Big Ten team to beat a Big Ten team at home, we should point out. Right. That's rebounded by McCurdy. You see McCurdy wanting to set those solid screens up top. 34-23. Coming down to a half minute. Two seconds differential on the shot clock, but... If you're Ball State, you want to hold it to the very end here. Don't give Illinois any chance whatsoever to score again. All of that red you see in the background, folks, not necessarily Ball State fans. Arkansas and Louisville are next. But I think most of the Arkansas Louisville fans are pulling now for Ball State. To oh, what a two on the shot clock. Missed the three. Gill at the buzzer. This is not a game for the faint of heart. 
This is a war. Illinois, 34, Ball State, 23. And our coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. It's 55-31 now with Oklahoma snapping out of the doldrums today, so it seems. Mookie Blaylock has 13 at this point. Stacy King has 12. And the Sooners, the top seed in the Southeast, are cruising at the moment. Now in Greensboro, let's tell you about Siena in Minnesota. Minnesota, the 11th seed, beating the 14th seed, Siena, by 10. And uh, let's go out now to Greensboro. In fact, we're not going to have a chance to go there because they've just gone the commercial, but Minnesota is leading by 10 over Siena. The winner of this game will be going against Duke Friday night in New Jersey in the round of the Sweet 16. 9.56 left in the first half of that ball game with the Golden Gophers leading by 10. James, let's get up on the earlier game today there at Greensboro. In the East Region, Duke University did not have an easy time of it with West Virginia. West Virginia, an awfully quick team, really hung in there but lost down a stretch by seven points. A poor free throw, free throw shooting performance really hurt them. Now, Coach K lays out the second half game plan knowing how quick West Virginia was, but Hurry Brooks burns him in the back door play any Way. Now, Duke makes it a habit of going through all the offensive options, and Robert Bricky, a grateful man, slams him to a two-point lead. Now, when it wasn't the spectacular, it was the routine that Duke relied on, good old-fashioned teamwork that helped him to knock off the number seven seed, West Virginia, by a seven-point margin. And so now Duke moves on. They will face the winner of Siena and Minnesota. And again, they are in a timeout with Minnesota leading by 10 at the moment in Greensboro. And there's the east bracket at the moment. Duke advancing on to the Sweet 16 for the fourth year in a row. And Duke will be playing an 11 or a 14 seed for a matchup that would then get them to the East Regional Final. All right, a story that's been hot all season long in college basketball involves the University of Kentucky and coach Eddie Sutton. This week, a Lexington television station reported that in discussions, Eddie Sutton's discussions, to stay on at Kentucky with the school, he would have uh, offered to let go of his assistants, team managers, everyone employed by the Wildcat program to keep his job. And joining us live right now from our CBS affiliate in Lexington, Kentucky, is Coach Eddie Sutton. And Coach, right off the top, your uh, impressions of this report, uh, how accurate was that report? It is not accurate at all, Jim. Uh, last week I had a meeting with Dr. Roselle, our president, Joe Birch, our interim uh, athletic director, my wife Patsy. We discussed a lot of things, but we never discussed personnel. And I think anyone that knows Eddie Sutton knows how precious I hold the world loyalty. Uh, it's a two-way street. People have always been loyal to me, and I'll always be loyal to them. And it really has upset me. I think it's a great example of irresponsible journalism. It's malicious, reckless, disregard for the truth. And uh, that's been a lot of the, the problems that we've had here at uh, Kentucky. All right, Coach, this is James Brown in New York now. Of course, until something definitive is done, the room and speculation will continue. You've maintained all along that you won't resign. Is that still the case, and why? Well, you know, my father, uh, many, many years ago, gave me uh, a great set of values, and he also told me how important it was to have a good name. I've coached 30 years. I've always tried to do it right. Uh, I'm not named in any of the allegations. I've done no wrong. And uh, that's the reason I've decided that I want to fight. Certainly, uh, uh, resigning has uh, been taken under consideration by my family, but uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. Coach, it seems like daily we have new information on this story. In fact, today I hold in my hand a, a wire story that just crossed that if you do not resign, you will be fired within the next few days as the Kentucky coach. Do you have any knowledge of this at all? And have you been asked to resign at Kentucky? Uh, it is my understanding that the athletic board will uh, meet next week, and it's possible that they would discuss, discuss my situation at that time. Uh, but I have not been asked to resign at this point. Coach, if in fact you are fired, is there anything that you can do to lessen the taint of that firing on your reputation? Will it be a tell-all on your part, I guess is what I'm asking. Well, I'm not sure what I can do. I, as I said before, I think people that know me, they know what I stand for, and I've always run an honest program uh, everywhere I've been, and I would hope that uh, that will be taken into consideration. As I said, in the 18 allegations that have been uh, named against uh, University of Kentucky, uh, I have not been named in any of them.
Eddie Sutton, thank you for going down to our affiliate this afternoon and joining us live here on CBS. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, James. Eddie Sutton, the coach at Kentucky. Let's remind you that uh, the third game of our triple header today involves, for many people, Arkansas against Louisville, while others will watch the Paul against UNLV or that Middle Tennessee State game against Virginia from Nashville, Tennessee. And then for you folks on the West Coast, All state. Well, at the turn of the century, it was known as the Indiana State Normal School. And then the Ball Brothers. Now, this is the family which makes these canning jars. I'm sure that many of you uh, have used them for the preserves in that. The family bought the entire school, gave them some money. It later was given to the state of Indiana. And because it was the Ball family, it later became Ball State. Coming up now, it'll be the second half. And we'll have it for you right after this message and a word from your local station. Monday. Billy Packer, we haven't seen a game this physical all season long. Well, we really haven't, and Rick Majerus is setting some great solid screens. And here we're going to see Paris McCurdy coming up on Kendall Gill. You're going to see one of the toughest screens that you'll see in college basketball. Now watch as the dribbler goes by. Gill is really going to get powered. Dribbler comes off, Nichols, solid screen, very fair and legal. At least Kendall Gill was left standing on that one, Brent. We've had some where guys were flat on their backs. And Billy, what just happened a moment ago? Well, what happened, in, and I think it was a nice piece of officiating, the officials as the two teams came out, got Kenny Battle on one side and McCurdy on the other, and said, guys, we really can't take too much more of this John. We don't need any more of that physical activity uh, if it gets beyond the stage of good, fair play. And I think that was a nice piece of officiating. We'll run through some stats for you. Illinois at 53%. They hit 11 of their first three, 5 of 17 after that. And Ball State only 38%. That's 13 above what you find in case of Ball State all the time. Turnovers, Ball State with 12, Illinois with 5. There's your leading scores here in the first half. Let's see if Illinois doesn't go back to that inside game. Lowell Hamilton having a very good first half, 5 for 6. Never saw the ball after the first 5 or 6 minutes. Straight man to man. Battle on Kid. Nice match up there. This is McCurdy, 42. Hamilton not playing, and McCurdy can put that ball on the floor and take it to him a little bit. Can't get the third shooter involved yet. Butts, number 30 here, he's got to get into that scoring well, you ball. You know who's board. guarding him? Bardo, the best defender in the Big Ten. Now there's one of the three, McCurdy. McCurdy recognized Lowell Hamilton wasn't stepping out on him. Rick Majerus goes back to that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Parrish having the toughest time in this matchup. Snap to Anderson. Missed the shot. Hamilton couldn't get the handle. Back to Gill. Gill with the jump shot. And it won't fall suddenly for Illinois. It's 34-25. Ball State chasing. Nobody reaching in on Kidd when he gets that ball. You know, they probably ought to rub butts off and get him away from Bardo a little bit so that he could be freed up to get off a jump shot. Butts is only two of six. Bardo stays right with him. If they set a solid screen on him and they get the switch, that'd free butts up. Double dribble. They force another turnover. I don't know what Nichols was thinking of. He wanted uh, Butts to throw the ball back, but he was in the backcourt. Billy, the two scorers who've led the way for Illinois, 11 for Hamilton and 12 for Anderson. Well, Hamilton's been a long time waiting to get that pass. He hadn't touched the ball. Jill has doubled at the baseline, sends it back to Hamilton. There he is. That was almost as an afterthought. Now here comes that press when they get the ball in the corner and go right down over the middle. Nice move. And they get a numbers advantage on that break that time, but they can't put it away. Anderson muscling the ball off for the Illini. Pace of the game right now, a little bit more of Ball State's favor. They like to play this half-court game. Illinois not shooting well, and they didn't at the end of the first half either. Well, it's a nice job by Bardo, cutting off butts. Kid, and it was partially blocked that time by Hamilton. 
Hamilton getting it back, and Ball State scores on the steal by Perry. Hard-nosed kid. Behind him. Gill's three is on the money. And then he showed us something right before the half. The jumper he put up. They go to the long pass to McCurdy. Offense. Offensive foul against McCurdy. That's his first personal foul of the game. That proves this is a contact sport because he, he's had a few contacts, but that's the first one that's been a foul. Illinois up by 12, 39-27. 17 minutes to go. Second half. Second Jarek, round of the Midwest. Jarris goes man to man now. Oh, and nice hand. Steal. It's a two-on-one break. Here's McCurdy. Nichols with good hands. As I said, he's not going to shoot the ball much for Rick Majerus, but he's got good hands defensively. And pretty solid with the ball. And a fine defender. Got it back to 10. Hamilton, nothing doing. They go to Anderson Lowe. No, not stay down. And it was hit last by Ball State. Delanois ball. How about Kidd coming over and almost getting a piece of that ball, taking that 240 pounds way off the ground. Henson setting the inbound play. Gill getting it to Anderson. And that was Lowell Hamilton. Let me check that. That was Hamilton, 15 points. So he has two field goals here in the second half. With a nice soft touch. And as I said, he's extended that range out. Not a good pass. Sloppy play. Gill coming back with it. And there's Battle, who has it knocked away. And he is fouled that time by Kidd. That's his second personal foul. Kenny Battle so quick on the floor. You know what I think is uh, one of the finest things I've ever heard about any player, and, and Kenny Battle fills this. They have the Hustle Award at Illinois, and Kenny is not even eligible for the award. They've named it after him because they know no player could possibly challenge him for that hustling ability that he has. Rick Majerus, very familiar with Kenny Battle. When he was playing at Northern Illinois, he did a number on Majerus' Marquette team. Been transferred down to Champaign. And he's one of the leaders of this team. Got it back, shipped it to his teammate. It is stripped away again by Ball State. Well, Nichols they do is... have trouble handling the ball. That's their big difficulty. Scott Nichols losing it. That's 16 turnovers for Ball State. The Nichols have got away with it the first time. And again, that was not carrying the ball because he didn't have his palm involved in it. It just was an unusual looking dribble. Anderson, remember when he was red hot, hit his first six? Now oh, he's missed seven in a row. They'd like to get him back in. Instead, it is Hamilton, and he is fouled on the inside by Parrish. Three fouls on Parrish. Well, that particular move there, Hamilton could have uh, been going for the diving championships, which are held here in Indianapolis as well for the NCAA. Nice move off the board. Yeah, this city of Indianapolis uh, never met a sport it didn't like. Exactly. Held the Pan Am Games. We were here a few years ago, and and uh, just great facilities in town. Final four will be coming to the Hoosier Dome. Right. 43-29, Illinois leading Ball State. And checking in is Keith Stalling. Nichols will sit down. There's a situation, Hamilton, about his only weakness, and he has never been a good free throw shooter, shooting under 60%. But as a team, Illinois was a woeful shooting team from the line last year. They've really improved themselves this year, up around 70%. Same is true for their outside shooting. Pressure. And stalling. Quickly got it up to Kidd, and now it'll be butts on the dribble. McCurdy buried in the left corner. Butts, and that's what they have to have. The tray giving him eight for the game. 34-32. Hamilton right back to the Illini. Knocked out of bounds. Ball State's ball. 
Well, Kenny Battle will try to keep that ball alive on the missed shot. Henson not happy with the way things have gone. Very impressive early. But Ball State digging back in here in this game. But I think what they're facing, Brent, is a mentally tough team in Ball State. Uh, normally you can knock a club out like this, but this club is not only physically strong, they're mentally tough. That's why it's hard to put them away. You know, they had Pittsburgh down. Pittsburgh rallied and went ahead. They still had the mental ability to go forward. Curry, Curry hitting the turnaround. Curry. Welcome those of you who are watching Oklahoma. Here, the number one seed in the Midwest, Illinois, leading Ball State by 10, 44 to 34. Ball State hanging in, and we'll be right back. Now, drive the excitement of Pontiac Grand Prix and get a mega value. Get $1,000 cash back direct from Pontiac, or GMAC financing as low as 4.9%. And if you're a qualified first-time buyer, another $600 cash back. That's up to $1,600 cash back or 4.9% GMAC financing. See your local Pontiac dealer for details. We build excitement. You're looking sharp. You're looking good. You've come so far. And we know how to make the most of who you are. The Gillette Atra Plus system with the Luber Smooth Strip for the best a man can get. Express Mail from your post office offers you guaranteed morning delivery. We deliver, we deliver. Saturday's service at no extra charge. We deliver, we deliver. And an overnight price of just $8.75. Speed, convenience, price. It's a package only we can deliver. Express mail from your postal service. We deliver for you. From Paris, the city of lights, the brightest new stars shine on ice. The World Figure Skating Championships, prime time tonight. Well, with Billy Packer, I'm Brett Musburger in Illinois, leading by 10, 44 to 34. Oklahoma, many of you have been watching that game. 65-38, the Sooners explode. Billy, for those who have just joined us, give a little overview as to how this game has unfolded. Well, a very impressive start early with the press by Illinois, and they pumped the ball inside, particularly to Lowell Hamilton. Uh, what happened, though, they got away from their half-court offense. Hamilton didn't see the ball for a long time. Ball State, a uh, mentally tough basketball team with two powerful inside players, able to come back and stay in this ball game. 16 turnovers, Billy, against that pressing defense that you mentioned. Most of them early on. Had 12 right off the bat. That foul on Kidd just a moment ago, Billy, was his third. They can certainly ill afford to be without Kidd or McCurdy. Ball State using the two transfers from Arkansas Little Rock. Many of you remember that run that that school made, beating Notre Dame and then losing to North Carolina State in overtime. Brent has a set play that time, trying to get Kidd's fourth foul as they set up Lowell Hamilton. Nice move by Lou Henson, didn't work. Kidd missed fine, rebound Ball State. It is McCurdy and a block and foul underneath. Well, I thought Nick Anderson had all ball that time. Nice piece of defense by Anderson as he looked McCurdy right in the eyes before he went for that pump fake. Billy, uh, I understand we've experienced some audio problems along the way this afternoon, and let me certainly apologize for that. And our technicians are working on it, and they'll get it restored for you. Paris McCurdy. Paris McCurdy. This is an underclassman team for Ball State. There's not one senior who has played for Majerus today. McCurdy will be back next year. He led the Mid-American Conference for Coach Majerus in rebounding. 8.4 rebounds per game. Couldn't get the roll that time. But they get it right back, hustling. Welcome the Minnesota crowd. This is Ball State with a putback, and they're making a game of it in Indianapolis. 44-37 is the score. 13.45 to go. The top seed in the Midwest playing a would-be Cinderella. 
And Brent, what they're getting right now is the crowd from Louisville and Arkansas is joining the other sea of red and working for the underdog. And backing away, a foul against Ball State. Going to the floor with Sean Parrish. That's his fourth foul. Biggest lead of this game was 15 for Illinois. Right now it is 44-37. What was it that uh, Rick Majerus said that here in this state, you pull for Indiana and whoever's playing Illinois? Well, it was funny yesterday. He said, I had the kids convinced that all those people in red were people from Ball State, which obviously their colors are red, but he never did tell them that so are the colors of Arkansas and Louisville red. <laughs> They're all for you, he said. He's a terrific personality. Now, Brent, the foul problems really presenting some problems, though, for Rick Majerus. He's got Parrish, who, although not a powerful player, has done a great job here today. He's got Kidd with some foul trouble, so he can't go to that bench. And that's offense against Hamilton. Ron Henson Miller. can't believe it. Illinois against Majerus' tough hand-to-hand -hand defense and switching defenses from zone to man-to-man. -man. They've hit only three of their last 15 shots. Majerus studied at the right hand of one of the best, Don Nelson. He's had difficulty handling the ball. It is the obvious weakness of the Ball State team. The pressing defense of the fighting Illini all game long has been on. Well, what's helped him, though, he's, he was going to the corners against the press early on. Now he's going more straight up the gut. It's really helped him. The Curdy and Kidd with that tournament experience so valuable. If they can just get Butts involved in the offense, stalling the young man out of Chicago. Butts misfiring, and Liberty comes away with the rebound for Illinois. You notice how good the defensive balance has been. They haven't been able to beat him back down floor. Anderson was fouled on McCurdy, his second. That is six team fouls on Ball State. You know, Only but two on Illinois. But you look the way this Ball State club was put together. You've got Nichols, uh, who came in here. Uh, you've got Parrish, who was a junior college transfer. Kid and McCurdy that we've talked about. Billy Butts, a transfer from Michigan. So it's taken Rick Majerus just two years to assemble this ball club. That's Illinois' first point in three minutes and 25 seconds. And Majerus will go to his bench and send Nichols back in. One of the things when you have a young man like Nichols who's experiencing difficulties, you want to keep his confidence bolstered because he's such an important figure for you in this game if he can get the ball up. See, they're keeping the ball out of the corners now, which has really changed that press. Coming back and meeting it right underneath the basket. This is Miller. Hits a three. It is 46 to 40. A six-point Illinois lead. Miller doing the job against Pitt. Coming right back today with a nice game. Smith wanted it inside. Got knocked by Anderson. Anderson. At 16 points for Nick Anderson. You've been right on the money about Ball State being mentally tough. Well, they are. And we've got three fellas, you know, playing who have played in the NCAA tournament before. And I think what else helped them is beating three Big Ten teams, Brent. I think that's made them uh, have an awful lot of confidence. And they've got the best record in the NCAA of any team that's in the field. So it's not like they haven't won some ball games. Stalling, misfiring. Miller goes back for it, got it, and brings it back out. I see Majerus telling his club, bring it back out, use this clock. They've turned this game around. Early on, it looked like it's going to be an 80-point game. Now they've got it down to one that could be in the 60s, which really benefits them. Double low post, McCurdy and Kidd. Haven't seen any of those solid screens in a while, Brent. Very physical first half. Officials warned the players before we started the second half. Miller fighting his way in. Can't get it to fall. And Illinois will come back. That's a pretty good half-court defense by Illinois that time. Miller realizing he had to put up something. Couldn't get anything uh, solid for anybody else. The lead is eight. Muscling the shot in, making a ten-point lead. And Smith, first field goal of the second half. 
Back to 10 it goes, 50-40. Butts ready to come back in the game. I think what Rick Majerus realized, he doesn't. He needs another shooter out there right now. And Miller, battling for position, is called for the foul. That's his second personal. And although Miller not a starter, he was the Mid-American Player of the Week back in early December, so the kid does have some ability. Shooting the one and one right now. Is Illinois with only seven. two team fouls this Ball, half. Four, and Small checks back in for Illinois. We talked Bradley about Bradley Illinois Bradley. being a much better free throw shooting team this year. Last year, talk about shooting, they only tried 67 three point shots. This year, they're very good from the three point range, particularly with Kendall Gill Anderson increasing his range out there. Only they're 7 of 12 from the free throw line today. Well, we saw DePaul turn it up a notch from the free throw line. Not a good free throw shooting team the other night. Anderson's got a solid game. And the lead is back to 12. They put six points on the board here. Ten minutes to go. Against the double team, Stalling not looking for the shot, but Miller will. Misses the three, and underneath his kid. Well, Kidd and McCurdy don't look tired, but Miller is really starting to breathe a little bit harder out there. Very, very physical game. Wearing that heavy knee brace. Surgery, and there's what the battle does best of all. Operates against that Ball State defense with the slam. Not a player in the country goes to the hoop any harder than Kenny Battle. Wanted Kidd. McCurdy has to help out quickly. See, that's not really a bad pass. It was off Illinois, and Smith reaching in. He foul butts. Now, Lou Henson not yet resting easy about this one, is he? We'll be right back. You can see it in the way it looks. You can feel it in the way it drives. This is America's premier sports coupe, Grand Prix. Get on your pony, I can ride on and now is a great time to check out Grand Prix with GMAC financing as low as 4.9% or up to $1,600 cash back on select Grand Prix for qualified first time buyers. We build excitement. See your dealer for details today. Good time is where you find it, and the last thing you want to do is slow it down. So come on into Coors Light, a great light beer for a good long time. Right beer now. In 1977, Charlie Ewell bought a brand new John Deere. Can I drive it someday, Dad? Someday, Tommy, someday. Years passed, and the John Deere was still running strong. Can I drive it now, Dad? Have to be a little bigger, son. Today, Charlie's John Deere still runs like the day he got it. Here's your big chance, son. Sounds fun, Dad. See ya. Which points out two things. You can count on a John Deere running for years and years. And you can count on being the one running it. to see a situation, Brent, where the weak side help is in position to help McCurdy over here on Kenny Battle. But he is so quick going to the hoop that the weak side help never gets a chance. And right here he goes by. By the time Miller can get over there, Kenny Battle has exploded for the dunk. And the lead right now, 54-42. The time remaining in this second round Midwest region inside of 9:20, The winner will meet... The winner of the Louisville-Arkansas game when four teams move on to the Midwest Regional in Minneapolis. Semi-finals will be played on Friday night in the Metrodome and in the final in the Midwest on Sunday afternoon. Inside to Kidd looking for the turnaround. And on the other side is McCurdy. 
Fred, not only is McCurdy strong, he's got soft hands. When he gets to that ball inside, it's all his, even against a powerful club. There, Parrish again coming up with another loose ball. Illinois occasionally tries to do too much one-on-one -on -one instead of punching it down in there. They're so effective when they get in their little half-court power game. Push off. And a foul call goes against Illinois. That was a good look by McCurdy playing against a fellow that actually had been teammates with his now for three years. Plus high school situations where he had a nice feel for how to dump that ball inside. And Oklahoma will move along in the southeast. That region will be played at Lexington, Kentucky. Minnesota and Illinois, two of the five Big Ten teams which won opening round games. You know, one of the fellows that helped Rick Majerus in regard to recruiting these two young men from Little Rock Arkansas was Sidney Monfrey. Fellow that Rick thinks so much of, obviously the great player from Arkansas. And, and Rick said he used him to explain to the kids that, that uh, they would enjoy playing for Rick Majerus. Hamilton checks in. And Small will sit down for the alumni. The also most famous alum, well, I shouldn't say most famous, how about best known alum from Ball State? How about David Letterman up the road? And I, I can't believe that he hasn't discovered Rick Majerus for a little late night chat. I mean, I said, Ricky, I've been on. He said, no, but he said, I'll tell you what, I can go one up on his stupid pet tricks. <laughs> It would be a great show on there they better for a stock, lot of reasons. They better stock up on some extra food in the green room if they get him in there. They go to Anderson. Rebound by Kidd. Ball State very much alive in this one. 54-45. 8-14. Have the Illinois players picked up some respect for Kidd and McCurdy inside in the first half? They were pushing and shoving. Now they realize these are two powerful young men in there. And there's the push-off that was not called on the last play. And that's foul number four on Kidd. Well, Rick Majerus cannot afford to take him out. I mean, he's got to stay in the game down nine. Yeah, he's thinking about it over there, but there's no way he can't let the game get away from him. He's being told by one of his yep. assistants over there. Now, now he's thinking about it. Well, he's got Mueller. He's going to bring Mueller in off the bench. This is a very calculated move. Now he's going back with Miller. He knows that Mueller it, it just doesn't have the power to be able to play against this Illinois club. You can't really get up and down the floor with it. That's yeah. When you start leaning on some of these fellas, you better be pretty strong. The kid will sit down. So he sits at the 804 mark. It's 54-45. Hamilton coming up over the top. Now, kid would have never allowed that ball to be taken away like that. But Ball State still winds up, and they get Miller on the break. Here's Butts. Well, this Rick, is the three, and it's Illinois' rebound. And already you can see they missed the presence of Kidd on the inside. Coming through was Gill, knocked out of bounds by Ball State. Gill thought he was hammered on the hands on that one. Fred Butts has really had a problem today, which is a testimony to Bardo's outstanding defense. He has not been able to get untracked. And Ball State needs that third score. Hamilton, turnaround jump shot. Goes back after it. And the foul is called on McCurdy. That's number three. Well, Hamilton, so tough to keep off those boards. A very quick leap around the inside. Used to playing in the low post. Now McCurdy picks up his third. Oh, Hamilton was the Chicago player of the year out of high school. One of the tragic stories in a number of times. Going to have to come back with Mueller, huh? Going to try him. But he uh, just needs his size in there, the seven-footer. Gold was in that great Chicago recruiting class that included Ben Wilson, who, of course, was shot, passed away, would have been one of the great college players of our time now. Parrish gets free. Wouldn't stay down, but McCurdy is there, and it won't go. They missed two baskets. Good outlet pass. Back to Gill. And a chance for a three-pointer. That was a
was an excellent outlet pass. Kenny Battle, the consummate team player, gives it right back to Kendall Gill. But what made that work is the fact that down on the other end, Ball State not able to convert when they had a couple of easy shots and a good outlet pass by Lowell Hamilton. Yeah, he scored his uniform number right now. 13 points and four assists for Kendall Gill in this game. Brent Rick Majerus is going to have to come back with Kidd. 12-point margin now, and uh, within the six-minute mark, he'll have to get him back in the ball game before this one gets away from him. Ball State's ball. Battle knocked it away and out of bounds. I think he's got some strong hands. He's going to bring Nichols back into the game at the seven-minute mark. Well, with Nichols back in the ballgame, it means Butts has got to start getting unloaded here with a couple of jumpers. He's being guarded by Kendall Gill now. He's out of the game. There's Butts trying to get open for the jumper. He's got it. Just can't hit. Three, and it's taken away by McCurdy and low. Off the fake, got pushed. Back up, and he was shoved. That's the fourth foul on Hamilton. And Henson must make a decision now regarding Lowell. Well, as we pointed out, with the exception of Kendall Gill, Lou Henson uh, is almost interchangeable with his players. He's got Marcus Liberty, who has not had the big game yet today. He can come back with him. Marcus Liberty, like many youngsters who come into the tournament, and set up by eight, having trouble so far. He was 0 of 7 against McNeese, and he hasn't scored here today. Battle diving for the ball, couldn't get control. See, that was so tough. Miller is trying to pump the ball into Mueller, and he and he looked the pass in there, and Battle just ripped it away from him. Irvin Small checks in, and now Mueller will go out for Ball State, and Kidd returns, playing with four personals. Billy, Illinois has only five team fouls at the 635 mark. They have one to give here, and Ball State has hit only two of its last 11. <laughs> Missing the layup. Held ball. Oh, possession arrow for Illinois. Just great hustle by both players. Like Anderson and Miller going after the ball. You know, a lot different in this second half, Brent. I think the mutual respect these two teams got for each other. A lot of cheap shots early on in the first half. A lot of drawing back and forth. But now just good aggressive play. Rick Majerus making that substitution. We anticipated having to come back in there with Kidd. No sense saving him in this stage. He's got to make a run. Miller sits down as Parrish returns. And for Majerus, Parrish has played with a lot of heart today. And you know, one of the things that Rick Majerus could think about is since Butts hadn't been able to score, is to put Miller back in the backcourt, try to get some jumpers off. Bardo has it knocked roll. away. Ball's on the floor again. And you know the possession arrow has been rotated in favor of Ball State, so they'll be taking it out of bounds. Nice pick and roll move there by Small. Fifty-seven forty-five, six oh nine to go. You notice this full court pressure. Kenny Battle, one of the best I've seen, guard the man taking the ball out of bounds because he reacts so quickly to that first pass. When they go, when they play this man-to-man -man press, sometimes they double in the corners. Sometimes Battle goes straight back. They've been much more effective when he doubled. Under pressure, loose. Illinois comes away again. Oh, Doesn't yes. Knocked right back by Ball State. And here's Parrish for an easy one. They do not quit. If they played five or seven one-on-one -on -one games, I think Illinois would shut them out. But basketball's a team game. And as a result, Ball State continues to hang tough. We'll be right back. of a percentage point last month. Oh, the flavor of the the oil price increase to take effect. Consumer price index jumped six tenths of one percent. Fear of inflation caused jitters in the financial market. Volatility, uncertainty, the unknown. Helping people reach their financial dreams requires an understanding of each person's goals 
At Merrill Lynch, we pride ourselves on getting to know you, one by one. Merrill Lynch, a tradition of trust. You're looking sharp, you're looking good, you've come so far, and we know how to make the most of who you are. The Gillette Atra Plus system with the Lubra Smooth Strip for the best a man can get. Now, drive the excitement of Pontiac Grand Prix and get a mega value. Get $1,000 cash back direct from Pontiac or GMAC financing as low as 4.9%. And if you're a qualified first-time buyer, another $600 cash back. That's up to $1,600 cash back or 4.9% GMAC financing. See your local Pontiac dealer for details. We build excitement. This is Christmas weekend for Mr. Billy Packer. Three games you can watch. That's our region here at Indianapolis. The second one you get to see here, Arkansas and Louisville. Then lots more coming your way. DePaul against Vegas. That's out in Boise, Arkansas against Louisville back here. Middle Tennessee State against Virginia. And again, the two most impressive conferences so far have been the Big Ten and the ACC. Trouble for the Southeastern. 0 and 5 and out of this NCAA. Gill can't get the roll. But they battle back for an offensive rebound and Anderson hammers in his 20th point. The kid knocked away. Ball State's ball with 5-12 to go. 59-47. Billy, what do you think? The underdog have one last burst in them. Can they make a run here at the town of the line? They may make a run, but they're not going to win this basketball game. And they've got to keep kid on the floor to make the run. Here he is. That's what they need. Back to 10 at the five-minute mark. I don't think that Illinois, I think Illinois has played a good game from a standpoint of hustling, but I don't think they've played a smart basketball game out here, particularly on the offensive end of the court. But here is a smart player, and that is Kendall Gill. They got things going early for him, maybe too easy early on, and they got away from their game. There's a screen being set, and Smith elects to go the other way, and was stopped on the jumper. And that foul is called on Butts. They're already in the one and one. Let's see if they give him one and one on it. And you know, we, we talk about Ball State from Muncie, one of the great capitals of basketball in this state. Muncie Central, the great high school program up there, has won eight Indiana State High School championships. That was a pass, Brent. I don't know why he got a shot out of it. You know, it's funny. I thought he thought in jump at the last he was going to shoot it. A shooting foul, but they went one and one on it. And you saw it the other way. Here he is coming back off the miss. Boy, good hands by Anderson. Gill, calm fake, comes in with a better percentage shot. Now are they going to take this basket? Are they going to count the basket and call the charge? See, every one of those kids from Illinois can take the ball to the basket when they get that offensive rebound. Such a good offensive rebounding team. Kendall takes it. Kendall takes it right down on the inside. Good job by Kidd waiting on him. <laughs> you see Kenny Battle screaming, he can't move. They change their press a little bit. Tough against Battle to get the ball inbounds, isn't it? How do you see anybody out there? Well, Battle's got quick hands, quick feet, and a quick mind playing that position. Everybody was a little bit afraid that Ball State was going to break long. That's why that was open. Now down to 4.15 in the game. They need butts. And it's blocked. Taps it back in, but to Illinois. On the break, battle to Gill. Wrap around, not there. Kid rebounded. 
62-49. They're going to have to start quickly if they expect to get back in it. But short on the three. Perry pushed as he puts it back up. He'll step to the line and shoot two. You know, you can see why Parrish wasn't given a lot of scholarships, actually none to four-year schools that I mentioned early on. But the kind of kid that's just a great role player for a team that could be doing as well as Ball State did. He's the kind of guy you'd overlook. Not a great leaper, not a great outside shooter, doesn't have a lot of strength, not a lot of quickness. He just plays the win. He's from Spencer, Indiana. 6'5", 190 pounds. He had 15 rebounds per game his senior year in high school. And everybody said pass. Went down to Vincennes. Remember a great junior college player from Vincennes? Mm -hmm. Robert McAdoo. He was something. Yes, sir. He was a scoring machine. Rick is funny. He lives right outside of Indianapolis, Ball State being up in Muncie. And I said, Rick, how long the trip is that? He's about 35 miles. I said, how long does it take? He says, about 20 minutes. And he said, if I see a blue light come behind me, that officer, I roll down my window and he says, if he doesn't say, hi, coach, I'm in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so far, he still has his license. 3.44 left. 62.51 Illinois. That's their play right there. Paul Hamilton. With 19 points this afternoon against Ball State. Now, particularly with Kidd with four fouls, but that's their meat and potatoes early on in this ball game. They cannot exchange baskets. Ball State needs a run. They've got to fill it up and then play some turnover style defense. They're at that point where they cannot afford to give up too many more points. Butts gives it up, and Kidd bangs in the deuce. Uh, Brent, we have not seen the last of this club. As you mentioned earlier on, this club does not have a senior on it of the guys that are really playing. They've got a couple of guys sitting out, a couple of recruits coming. So I think they're going to be a factor on the national scene next year. Yeah, Miami of Ohio and the rest of those mid-American schools will uh, face a favorite ball state in that conference next year. Now, this is, goes to show you the respect that Lou Henson has for this club. He's pulling things out. The object of the game is to win, not necessarily be pretty. Ball. Go with Billy Packer. I'm Brent Musburger at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. This is the first of two. Louisville and Arkansas still coming. Rick's a little bit out of, out of the coach's box. Oh, he's been out of the coach's <laughs> box all day. That doesn't count with Rick. Anderson. Boy, he elevates nicely on that jumper. Anderson. turnovers from the Jarrett's. Now the last time this club went to Minneapolis, which is where they're going to be going, it wasn't such a good trip for them, but they'll be tough competition for anyone. Say, where'd you learn to dunk? In finishing school? again this afternoon. Not over in 106 points already for Coach Billy Tubbs and the Sooners. And they are pulling it out. You know, Billy, only three players this year have scored 20 points against Ball State. Nick Anderson is the fourth with 22. Lowell Hamilton has 19. So Majerus' defense has been tough against the star personalities, but here today, Anderson in impressive fashion. He can move that shot of his from either side on the baseline. He can do it well. Eli Parker from Western Michigan was one of those. Walker Lambie out of Northwestern and the other guy did it to that outstanding player, Jason Matthews of Pittsburgh. So, as you say, they've been tough on individual scores and holding people down in the 40% range. Two minutes. They need some of the threes, some turnovers. Here's their specialist in the three. He'll take it in for a two, hits the side of the glass. Off comes potential layup for the Illini, but Smith couldn't get it. Oh, the good hands. Follow up is good. Score the basket. Just great hands by Nick Anderson. None of the ball handling on that break was very good, but Anderson was able to convert. Kid's an outstanding player. If Illinois' lead holds up and they win it, they would take on the winner of our second game today, Louisville and Arkansas. And Louisville, a very slight favorite in that game. 
Well, Brent, when you talk about Prop 48 kids not able to make the adjustment after sitting out a year, Anderson's one of those that kind of turns things around. Because last year he made second team all Big Ten, and it sure hadn't slowed him down in his second year of playing. One of the premier recruits out of Illinois as a senior in high school. Proved to be every bit as good as his press clip. Nice fake by Kidd. Kidd. And they're trying to foul now quickly. They'll put Gill on the line at the one one mark. 1.21 to go. We wind down the clock on this game here at the Hoosier Dome. Lou Henson, who took New Mexico State. Remember some of the players who played for him? As Marcus Liberty checks back in, you remember Sam Lacey? He was the pivot man for Lou back in 1970. Jimmy Collins, one of his assistants over there on the sideline, he was a guard on that team. Three straight years he got knocked out by UCLA. Twice in the regional and once in the final four. And then when you know it, the great John Wooden retired and Lou Henson moved to Illinois as a result because Gene Barto, the Illinois coach, moved out to Westwood and replaced the retired John Wooden. So John Wooden has played a huge role in the life of Lou Henson. Well, I think it was interesting yesterday when he was talking about those teams. He said those teams were much more talented than this Illinois club in terms of just pure raw talent. He said this team has got to come and play physical hard-nosed ball every day to maximize its ability. And it's done that here today. Gave up only 55 points with a minute to go. They have been tough on defense. Battle stepped on the sideline. Ball will go back to Ball State. Gosh, he's so quick. Plays so hard. You love the way these kids play. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I don't know if he ever gets tired. I mean, he looks just as strong and fresh now as he did at the very beginning of the game. And this has been a bruising battle. The one player they could use is Marcus Liberty to step up off the bench the rest of the way. He's struggled so far in a couple of tournament games. Hadn't even looked for a shot here this afternoon. That's There's a downtown jumper. And he banged that one in, didn't he? I'll give you another player they could use. Alonzo Morning. Give him some size in the middle. <laughs> then you could call this tournament over. The one thing they don't have is a powerful post player from a standpoint of size. Billy, what have you seen overall in the tournament? I've been raving on about the Big Ten and the ACC. And well, they're, you know, they're going to have the confrontation. Iowa, NC State, so one of, the, one of those uh, two going to have a loss there. I, I, I've just been very impressed with the balance of the teams that were the supposed underdogs to show you how great basketball is being played all over the country. You know, even some of the losses were, uh, you know, just great exhibitions of fine basketball players and, and, and well-coached teams. The South Alabama-Alabama game, just you know, a battle that hadn't taken place before. It could have gone either way. There's been a lot of them like that. Colorado State, you know, none of us talked about them all year long. And look at what they're doing. So the starters come out for Illinois, and the clock begins to wind down. The Illini shot 51% here this afternoon. They're going to be moving along to Minneapolis. Kid hit a two. So he can play someplace other than the low post with that jump shot. Not pretty. 16 seconds to go, 72 to 60. This may sound funny. Illinois has got one of the best presses in the country, but you know, I think they could be pressed. They have uh, not been real smart with the ball today. Rick Majerus, one of his recruits coming to Ball State. Lou wants a timeout. Yeah, I don't think Lou is happy with the way his team's handling the ball. So we'll take a break. And Henson going to send in another sub here for the final seven seconds. <laughs> Coach, oh. seven seconds, you call time out, let all the kids play. And I don't think the boys' name is on the roster. I, I, that's just my opinion. That might not be the case. So Illinois moves on to Minneapolis, and the dream ends for Ball State. A 12-point difference. Illinois wins it by 12. 72 to 60.
Uh, Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger. Let's send you to the... The town has definitely come alive with all kinds of basketball fans. I'll have a live report coming up. Deborah, Illinois was just too powerful for the Ball State Cardinals. Scott Hope brings us the highlights. Heavy storm... Nickel Fieldhouse, North, North, uh, Lawrence North Wildcats, no problem with Triton Central. They were led by uh, Todd Leary's 27 points to an 82-56 win over Central. They will go on to tonight's championship against Muncie South. The Rebels were easy winners over Connersville, 82-53. We will, of course, have a lot of highlights and scores and also talk live with Ed Sorensen from Tucson tonight, coming up at about uh, 6.20. All right, Scott, we'll check back with you later for more highlights. Thanks. At the Holiday Inn earlier today, we found Louisville fans having a good time while they waited for their own game, they watched another. Louisville wants Illinois. Yeah! Yeah! Anytime! Yeah! Can't wait. You gotta get fast and crazy about The bar has been nearly full all day and night since Thursday, and waitresses don't mind the business. Wonderful. Very good people, real good tippers, and nice people. Everybody's been real nice. You're keeping in a great mood through all this. It's a lot of fun. I love my job. More crowds ramble through the lobby, and it seems more than a few fans can't do much more than ramble. They don't have tickets. That includes a few Razorbacks. We drove 500 miles, we can't get tickets. A little disappointed, I'd say. For a stadium as big as this place is, I can't believe that we can't get in to see the ball game. They're sold out. We heard the same story many times outside the Dome. We're just going to walk around, and if somebody wants to get rid of them, we want them. You real good fans? We love the cards. All the way. Go cards. Yeah. Others found a way to make the best of it by waiting and watching the games at the same time. Gonna stand outside the Hoosier Dome and watch it on TV. Knowing that we're right outside, get the atmosphere at least. Well, at halftime they said they're going to sell the will call tickets, so we figured we could see the second half at least. Right. Can we continue? We had to fight the odds all season long, but Illinois was just a little too much to handle. Dan O'Brien says, though, the cards fought hard. Ball State didn't know quite what to expect from Illinois. Oh, the Cardinals knew the Illini were good and quick, but didn't know to what degree until they got a first-hand look. I guess that quickness really took a toll at the end of the game because, I mean, they just got great athletes. The first five minutes set the tone as Illinois quickly went up by nine points, forcing Ball State to play catch-up the rest of the way. They, you know, just totally took us out of, I mean, right from the start, they jumped us. An 11-point halftime lead quickly grew to 15 early in the second half, but Ball State didn't go down. No, I knew this was going to happen. It was so filthy, I almost couldn't find the car anyway. We're going to talk a little uh, Rick Majerus here and also take you live to Cincinnati with the Reds. I am not a happy Cardinal tonight. I'm well, sorry. We ought to be a happy Red. Though. Well, that I am. One out of two ain't bad. No, I'll keep you in the major. That's right. We'll be back. Players then. are unhappy that Rick Majerus has officially left to coach Utah next year, but most of them understand the reasons for his departure. Ball State administrators do not, however, understand why Rick could not come back to Muncie to face the players as he said he would do. Associate Dick Hunsaker had a weak excuse for his friend, and here it is. Just was exhausted. Uh, has the press conference tomorrow in Salt Lake City. Yeah. Over, but early beginning for a couple. By of the way, congratulations. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll take a handshake terrific. there. You were as if us, I did anything. <laughs> she was telling us all season how good Michigan was, and of course we didn't believe her. Yeah, but well, it's... she doesn't like Bill Freeder that well, though. No, right? I'm so... not a real big Freeder fan. Well, I that's was why Fisher nice was the difference. That's yeah. right. There you go.